The Langstroth design was developed by Lorenzo Langstroth back in 1852. It's been the commercial standard since, since then. And it consists primarily of 10 frames inside of a box, a super it's called, or a high body, a bottom, and a top. <clears throat> and on those 10 frames, we usually use 100% beeswax or plastic foundation, depending upon what is available to the beekeeper. I personally use 100% beeswax because I feel that it's more important for the bees to have real beeswax than petroleum products, but sometimes it's a matter of economics and other people can't, can't come to that. The Langstroth hive is movable. I was a former commercial beekeeper, so obviously they're easy to move, they're easy to manage. You can look down in the hive and see all the frames and see what you need to do, so they're, they're relatively easy to manipulate. So between the top and the bottom is called the hive body. It's basically a super, and people say, well, like, what is a super? Well, to me, I always think of surplus. It means extra, because as the Langstroth hive develops, you will add supers on top to accommodate the bees. Remember, the bees live in trees normally, so they always want to move up. They're vertical. So when we put a super on top of the hive, the bees will normally move up and fill those frames. And with the Langstroth hive, it's real important to put supers on, not early, but when the hive is pretty much all the way across, when there's about seven or eight frames of, of bees and honey, put the super on, the bees will move right, in, right up in it. One of the primary benefits of the Langstroth hive is, of course, the frames are mov movable and easy to get out. Uh, they're secured by a wooden frame and by a wire, so you can extract them in an extractor easily without them blowing apart. Um, they're good for checking if you want to check for disease or mites. You can easily pull the frame out and look at it, turn it whichever direction you want without concern about it falling over or anything like that because it's secured with wire. Um, if you have American fowl brood or European fowl brood or sac brood or any number of diseases, it's easy to spot them quickly and analyze it with a, with a Langstroth hive. So we have a queen excluder, which is used to keep the queen out of an upper super. So when you want to take your honey off, you won't have eggs in there to bother with. So that's what a queen excluder is used for. Usually it has a shallow super above the queen excluder. Typically with a Langstroth hive, you would have the hive body, a super, then the uh, excluder, and then a shallow. And you would run that shallow sometimes for comb honey. Some people like to use them for comb honey. They're a little bit lighter weight, a little easier to manage. I think the average weight for a shallow is around 25, 30 pounds. The full depth supers on the Langstroth hives can weigh 85, 90 pounds, depending. In a situation like that, I tell people, don't panic. Take the honey out a frame at a time. It's very simple to do. And when we take the honey out, we just brush the bees off and we extract the comb and bring it back to the bees. So they always have a, a full cycle of comb to work with. Uh, there's also, um, you saw the moving, the moving and robbing screen. It sets on the front of the hive, it screws on. It's to keep wasps out, or if you want to move at night, you can let the bees come out into a screen area. If you have wasps, you come back in the evening, screw it on to the front of the hive, close the entrance on the bottom, so the wasps come back the next day trying to get in access to the, uh, to the colony, and they can't. And then up above, there's a metal plate, which you'll notice on the left side of it, which has an opening on top where we let the bees out. The wasps can't see the bees behind the metal plate, so the wasp can't get the bees because the wasp will kill the bees. So the, the one gallon feeder lasts, uh, what we do is we have a piece of wood or two pieces of wood or wire in there so the bees will float and they won't drown. So you, usually what we usually do is mix up our syrup, take it out, pour it in uh, outside the hive. Don't pour it inside the hive depending upon how agile you are because you don't want to slop anywhere because it will attract ants obviously. The syrup will last, I timed it, lasts about 15 hours. but. Ideally, when you have packages of bees, you've started installing your bees, uh, you probably want to leave it in there like every other day would be okay. If you're close, feed them every day, but every other day will still maintain good stimulation from the queen because that's why we're feeding them. We're having to draw a comb out because all those frames are foundation. They have to have eight pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. So you can do the math, but it's a lot of, a lot of syrup, a lot of honey to be able to draw out those frames. And remember, without the frames drawn out, the bees can't do anything. They can't bring in water, they can't bring in nectar, they can't bring in pollen, they have no place to store it. And in the summertime, what happens is bees are bringing in water all the time. Different, different bees have different jobs. And it takes about a gallon, one gallon of water to keep bees going in per day to ventilate the hive. It's like an evaporative cooler inside there. So these bees are all fanning and cooling the, the colony down. 
There's a telescoping lid and an inner cover. The inner cover acts as an insulator, especially in summertime. A lot of times we'll take and set the lid up just a little bit on top of the inner cover for more ventilation. But it's a place to feed if you need to put emergency sugar in there. There's a 3 8 B way because all the Langstroth the equipment has a 3 8 B way all around the, around the frames, the top and the bottom. So there's plenty of air movement and ease of movement for the bees throughout the colony.